time do we push off, Stuart? About ten minutes. Any chance of a cabin? You don't mind sharing, sir? Not at all. I'll see what I can do. Come on. Have you lost your dog? Hey, hey what's going on up there? Well, don't blame me. And don't stand there like a dumb clown. Will you help me pick them off? Look at the thing. Sorry, it wasn't my fault. Fall under me feet there. That too. Sorry, I didn't... Goodness me, it's a grand thing, isn't it, when a girl can't take a trip on a boat on her own without being tested by people like you. I'm very sorry. No. Can you tell me where cabin 21 is, please? Uh, along there. Thank you. Not at all. I hope you meet again on the boat. Uh, what, what's your name? Oh, Shannon's the name. Moira. What's yours? Uh, Western Peter. Are you taking the Mickey Douglas? No. Are you going to London? I am. Uh, perhaps I can give you a lift in my car. Oh, I have got a rail ticket, thank you. We can get the money back at the booking office. Are you sure about that? Yes. In that case, I think I will. Excuse me. Here, you've forgotten your scent spray. This way, sir. Good evening. Where's the washroom? Right next door, sir. You haven't much in that bag. Just a couple of pads and a bat and odds and ends. What of it? You look as if you have a lot of understanding. There's something in your face I like. Oh, there's a lot of kindness there. Mm, nice of you to say so. Are you fond of animals? Yes, I'm very fond of animals. So am I, particularly of Daisy. Daisy? Yes, I bought her in Rio six years ago. She was no longer than a pencil. And now she's come between me and my wife. Anything goes wrong in the house, it's always Daisy. And yesterday, there's a couple of kippers missing from the larder. And there was a row to end all rows. And I did a bump. <laughs> Wouldn't you have done the same? No, I, I don't think so. No, I'm certain that if I'd been in your shoes, I wouldn't have left my wife just for, a, just for an animal. I'm going to have a shower. When does this boat sail? Uh, any minute now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tea, sir. What happened to the man who was up there? Oh, he went ashore at the last moment, sir. Good riddance, if you ask me. Drunk as a newt he was. He left something behind. Oh? What, sir? An alligator. I think I'd better get you that cup of tea now, sir. Yeah, but there the, the, the really is an alligator. Look under the bunk. If I do happen to find an alligator under your bunk, sir, it would only mean the shipping company would charge you for carrying livestock. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I have other passengers to attend to. Oh, don't go! I...
Dear Mr. Weston, I've gone back to my wife, but I can't take Daisy with me. She's yours for keeps. I know she'll take a real fancy to you. You've got the alligator look. P.S. Daisy should be bathed daily. She likes her back scrubbed. Now, Daisy, um, get back in your bag. Now, don't be a naughty girl. Get back in your bag and do as you're told. Early. You don't call this early, do you? You're not going to throw that bag overboard, are you? No, I... Ah, you've been playing cricket badly, haven't you? And you're going to throw away your gear. Just like my father getting into a temper and breaking his golf clubs. I tell you what, if you don't want your batting pads, why don't you give them to an orphanage or something? That's a jolly good idea. Hey, well, you've got an animal in there. And you were going to drown it. Well, it can swim. What, 20 miles? I just say it can swim 40 miles if it wants to. Oh, give me that bag. I warn you, if it bites, it's your own responsibility. Animals do not bite people who love them. Oh, an alligator. There, then. Did the nasty man lock you up? And did you want some lovely fresh air? I made some air holes in the end. I've a good mind to report you to the RSPCA. Well, she's not mine, you know. Somebody left her in the cabin. Apparently, her name's Daisy. Oh, isn't she sweet? Well, no, she's not. I think all alligators are quite disgusting and horrible. Oh, poor Daisy. She's so bewildered by it all. And it's not her fault she's here. She's really a very nice alligator. But until she gets used to you, don't feed her by hand. I shan't feed her at all. Now, you're not such a heartless person as you're making out to be. Now, come on, where shall we put her? Overboard. We will not. I just cannot understand how anybody can leave it to the mercy of a brute like you. Well, what you don't understand is that I've got a, a thing about reptiles. That they, they scare the life out of me. I don't even like lizards. And brute or no brute, I am not taking that blasted alligator ashore. Fancy you being a musician. Have you written any songs lately? Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't had any published yet. But I thought you said you weren't your living from music. Well, I do in a way. I... I want you might call a frustrated musician. I sell pianos in the music department of Harkers. <laughs> what do you do? I work at the zoo, Pets Corner. Well, then I can give Daisy to you. No, thank you. I have plenty of pets. I've got four guinea pigs, two toucans, and a dog. Daisy would eat the lot. Oh, no, I meant give Daisy to the zoo. The zoo doesn't want any more alligators, and it wouldn't take any more. Wouldn't it? Ah, the customers, they're bound to take it, aren't they? Anything to declare? Yes, an alligator. Nothing else? No, just an alligator. Hey, what's up? Daisy needs a swim. No, I dare say she does. I want a large whiskey and soda, but I'm not going to get one. <laughs> Alligators need to be immersed in water daily, otherwise they dry up. Now stop at the next stream. Or pub? Stream. There's one. Stop here. This clutch is a bit dodgy. We never get to London at this rate, you know. It looks so silly parading along with Daisy. Oh, you're too self-conscious. And I'm sure composers should never be self-conscious. Well, I'm not self-conscious when I'm composing. But at other times, I like to observe certain normal conventions. And taking alligators for walks doesn't happen to be one. Now, this is the way you pick up an alligator. By the tail. And remember, it's not cruel. It's the right way. The way you pick up a rabbit by the ears and a cat by the scruff of the neck. Now, watch. Have you got that? Yes. Well, now, hold this. Well, this'll do fine. Well, how do you propose to get it out again? You'll be back in ten minutes. Really? <laughs> there are, Daisy. Now, Daisy, don't go too far. Daisy! Daisy, come back here! Daisy! Daisy! What did I tell you? Oh! It's 
It's all right. I've got her. Now, Daisy, you stay there. You've had your fun. Peter. Peter, are you all right? Peter. because I've just had a letter from Albert. And whenever I get a letter from Albert, I always feel nun-like for at least three days. Who's Albert? Daisy's father? He is not. He's my fiancé. Oh. You're engaged? I am. So am I. You should have told me. No, I did as soon as you told me. Don't change the subject. What's the name? Vanessa Colebrook. Well, why aren't you with her now? I've been on holiday in Ireland, playing cricket with my uncle. <laughs> Very rich uncle, too. Hey, what have you done to her? Stuffed her? She does look like a log, doesn't she? She's thinking. They always do look like a log when they're thinking. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I'll never be allowed to keep her at home. You've no idea what my family are like. Oh, Daisy will settle down in a few days. They'll love her. I knew that clutch would let us down. Do you mind going around to steer a bit? This chap you're engaged to, does he live in London? No, he's in South America with the headhunters. But he's coming back to take me out there with him. You mean you're going to live with the headhunters? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, it's just about everything. I mean, you might lose your head. And it's a very pretty head, but I'm beginning to wonder if there's anything in it. Well, thank you. Um, something wrong with the clutch. A bit of an oil leak somewhere. I often used to wonder what the fuss was all about when they told me how exciting love could be. I used to smile politely because I hadn't any doubt it was something that would never bother me. Then all at once it happened like a bolt from out the blue And it hit me and it almost knocked me flat And that was that Beat the drum, bang the gong Let the golden wedding bells chime My heart's a flutter, I'm walking on air I'm in love for the very first time Turn me loose, set me free I've no use for reason or rhyme I'm hazy, crazy, but what do I care? I'm in love for the very first time. I thought that I was freer than the birdie in the sky. Then you passed by. And wham, before I knew it, I was really going through it like a fish on a hook with that silly faraway look. I'm mad as a hatter, but what does it matter? I'm in love for the very first time.
given the birdie in the sky, then you passed by. And wham, before I knew it, I was really going through it like a fish on a hook. With that silly far away look, I'm mad to have her, but what does it matter? Let me live and love and laugh and be merry. I'm in love for the very first time. Shall I see you again? Well, I would like to know how Daisy's getting along. Oh, I shan't keep her. Then I shan't be seeing you again. Goodbye. But, well, what about Sunday? We could have a picnic. I'll bring Daisy. Mr. Weston, for someone who's engaged, you seem to have an awful lot of free time. What about you? I told you, Albert's in South America. Well, we've got Daisy to think of. See you on Sunday. Hey! My handbag. Right, Sunday at 11. Jump to it, boy. Your grandfather's here. Is that the boy late on parade again? He don't often get up here these days. But he didn't know you were coming. He's only just back from his holiday. Oh, been on leave, eh? How's he getting on with his work, Geoffrey? All right, father. Stuart Harkers. Pity. Should have joined the army. Hello, mother. Hello, darling. Do you have a nice time? Oh, wonderful. Good. Get yourself a drink. Thanks. Hello, grandfather. Sorry not to have been here when you arrived. Oh, it's all right, my boy. Jeremy, what are you doing with yourself these days? Still selling pianos, writing a few songs? Songs? Military marches, I hope. <laughs> I'm fond of a good military band. Good for morale. Just go and unpack Peter's things before dinner. Yes, I... I remember a musical fellow in India years ago who used to write military marches. Nice fellow. What was his name now? Baxter. Beckett. Beckett. Per Percy Richards. You remember him, Geoffrey? No, father. Oh, nice fellow. Came to a sticky end. Got eaten by a mugger. Really? Poor fella. What's a mugger? Oh, any fool knows what a mugger is. A crocodile, of course. India's full of them. Poor Richard was eaten alive by one. What happened? Well, he was swimming when the mugger got him. Big surprise to us all. Why? Well, he happened to be in the swimming pool at the time. <laughs> oh, horrible things, muggers. Shoot them on sight, that's what I say. Only thing to do with them, shoot them. Of course. No! Oh, no! Oh! Oh. It's burglars. Don't panic. Oh, of course I shan't panic. Help! What is oh, it look! Like? In your cricket bag, look! Good grief, muggers! Something difficult to scream somebody! Rat Tyler House must have escaped the suit! Stand back! I've been oh, in this situation before! Don't shoot! Don't shoot? <laughs> I remember my agent being attacked in Delhi. Luckily, I had my gun with me. Good gracious, Father, you've shot your old adjutant. Uh, same thing happened in Delhi. If this is supposed to be a joke, I'm very far from being amused. Where'd you get the wretched thing in the first place? It was left in my cabin last night. You don't seriously expect me to believe that. Where is it now? In the bath. The bath? Have you gone completely mad? Am I expected to clean my teeth with an alligator watching me? Oh, Damn it, man, the thing's insanitary. That's the trouble with you, Dan. You always fly off the handle whenever anything a little odd happens. I think most people would consider the introduction of an alligator into their home more than a little odd. Well, can I keep it until Sunday? Don't want to take it to church, do you? No. Out of the question. Bringing the thing into the home, giving your grandfather a heart attack, frightening the life out of your mother, you're irresponsible. Get rid of the thing tonight, now. Oh, be reasonable, Dad. Tomorrow morning. Oh, well, tomorrow morning. But keep it out of your grandfather's way. Thanks, Dan. No good, I'm not going to scrub you. There's no use giving me loving looks. I don't even like you. 
You've caused me enough trouble already. Tomorrow you go. All right, just this once. Well, behind the ears, this is the first and the last time. Come on, now, give me your hands. Give me your hands, come on. There. How's that? Now, you be a good girl while I go and get your bed ready. Is this you? Well, I was just going to put her to bed. Stand to attention, sir. Oh. Oh. Yes, madam, I've got that. A miniature poodle, coloured chocolate brown, lost last night Camden Grove, answering to the name of Bessie. We'll let you know if it's brought in, madam. Oh, it's all right, she's not dangerous. You could put your head in her mouth if you wanted to. I don't want to. As a matter of fact, she is the reason I called. I, I, I want to dispose of her. Oh, well, what is it? An alligator. I see. Yours? Yes, I was given it. You was given it and you took it. That's right, and uh, now I want to give it to you. Uh, the, the police, that is. Well, we don't want it. And there's nothing in regulations to say we've got to have it. Oh, isn't there? Try the zoo. Well, they don't want it either. I don't blame them. Get it out of here. What, what, what shall I do with it? Tell him, Jorkins. Flog it. <laughs> well, who would buy it? The pet shop. There's one round the corner. Oh. Do you think I get very much for it? If I was you, I wouldn't be too fussy about the price. Uh, quite so. Thank you. Chalkins. Sergeant. Kindly see I'm not disturbed by any more alligators this morning. Yes, Sergeant. <coughs> oh, I won't keep you more than a moment. Winston's been a naughty boy. I've been having a few sharp words with him. <laughs> I talk to the animals by breathing down their noses, you know. It's a secret language in the animal world. Come on, Daisy. Out you come. All right. All forgiven and forgotten. There we are. Now, is there anything I can do for you? Uh, well, I, I was wondering if you would be interested in buying an alligator. Why, bless me. It's a saber-toothed jackery asshole from Brazil. <laughs> I shall have to talk to her in Spanish. Really? I'll just have a word with her. <laughs> She's shy, you know. She doesn't want to be overheard. The Brazilians are often like that. I'll talk to her through my trumpet. <laughs> she speaks in English, after all. Devoted to you, and she thinks you're very attractive to the female sex. And she doesn't want to be sold. I don't care what Daisy wants, it's what I want, and I want to sell her. I never buy animals against their will. You ought to consider yourself very lucky to have a delightful pet like Daisy. An alligator delightful? Of course. I have one myself, a dear little girl. She nibbles my toes while I'm dressing. Now, see that she's bathed daily, has plenty of fish and raw meat. And if you wish, you can bring her to talk to me again. Good morning. Quiet, quiet, Winston. Don't be so impatient. It's good to keep the ladies waiting. I think this will give you all the information you require. Uh, yes, it's 
seems very comprehensive. Thank you. Can I be of some assistance to you, madam? Yes, I'd like some dance records, please. Swing, jive, or Victor Sylvester. A selection. Western kindly serve this lady. She would like a selection of dance records. If you'll kindly step into the cubicle, madam. Thank you. Ah, uh, Mr. Weston is an expert on dance music. Darling, don't be cross with me for coming here, but I had to see you. Daddy's got to go abroad very soon, and he wants us to have our engagement party this weekend. Oh, good. You don't sound very pleased. I feel pleased, but I can't look pleased. Not just on the warpath, and it's not done to be too chummy with the customers. Never mind, darling. You won't have to worry about him much longer. Oh, and Daddy wants to meet your parents, so you're to bring them down for the weekend. I can't. My grandfather's staying with us. Well, bring him, too. All right. I must go now. I'll ring you tonight as soon as we're closed. Are you at home? Mm-hmm. I think your Mr. Weston is a wonderful salesman. I'll take all those records. Would you send them and put them on my father's account, Sir James Colburn? Oh, certainly, Miss Colburn, certainly. Thank you. While your sales methods appear successful, Weston, I do not consider them suitable for hawkers. Kindly serve that lady without making amorous advances. Good morning, madam. Can I be of any assistance? Ah, good morning. I wish to purchase a pianoforte. Certainly, madam. A mellow pianoforte. It's for my girls. And then, of course, it'll come in useful for the Women's Institute. Yes, well, we have an excellent selection. Have you in mind an upright or a grand? Oh, an upright. Any particular make? No, I don't think so. Well, this is a very fine specimen. It has a wonderful tone, too. Oh. Yes, it's not mellow. Shall we try another? This one may suit you. It, it is very highly strung, uh, overstrung, and has the latest hammer action. Oh, really? Yes, it's better, but it isn't it's quite what I want, you know. Oh, what's this? Uh, I, I don't think that would suit you at all, madam. Oh, what a dear old piece. It's not a standard make and has a very bad tone. It's second hand and very expensive. Well, that's me to decide, isn't it? Now, well, let's see. It's apt to do that. I warned you it was unreliable. Very extraordinary. <laughs> lift the lid. Wouldn't do any good. Very well, then I'll lift it myself. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> A crocodile. No, it's an alligator. Don't argue. Fetch the manager. Oh, it's outrageous. And my weak heart. What's the trouble, uh, madam? There is a crocodile in this piano. Of what? I should have been warned. The crocodile wearing a pink tie. Oh, madam, really, I must ask you to be careful what you say. To suggest that hawkers keep crocodiles in their pianos is a very serious slander. Very well, then. Look for yourself. Oh, well, she's tipsy. <laughs> Rest. This is going too far. I've got to speak to you. It's a matter of life or death. Yeah, it's a Daisy's it's life or death. Well, what's the matter? Look, Daisy's got me the sack. I'm flat broke and I'm fed up with it. Well, you mean you're not getting any fonder of her? No, certainly not. Well, is she getting any fonder of you? I must say she looked a little sad when I left her. Left her? Where? I smuggled her back to my bedroom. Well, has she had any lunch today? Yes, pounds of fresh salmon. She turned up her nose at the cod. Well, where'd you get the money for the salmon? It's very expensive. I had to pawn my cigarette case. Oh, Peter. Look, Maura. I, I must find a home for Daisy by the weekend. Why? I, I've got to stay with my fiancé's parents. But I thought we had a date on Sunday. I know, I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid we'll have to call it off. Oh, be a sport and take it just for the weekend. I will not. I wouldn't even if I could after that brush off. There wasn't a brush off. Now, if you don't take it, there's only one thing I can do. I shall leave her in Regent's Park late, tonight, at midnight. And if she dies of cold, it's entirely your fault. Whatever happens to you or your alligator is of no interest to me at all.
Well, this is it, old girl. I'm sorry it had to end like this, but as you know, the parents can't stand the sight of you. And quite frankly, neither can I. Come on. Well, look after yourself. The zoo's over there. So you've done it. You've really done it. Yes, I've given Daisy her freedom. You mean you've left her to starve, or to be run over, or carved up into handbags? Oh, steady on. I think you're the most despicable, the cruelest, the most heartless man I've ever met. Well, then I can't think why you bother to come here to see me. I didn't come to see you. I came because I care what happens to Daisy, because I love all animals, even if they aren't very pretty. Oh, just a minute, let me explain. You I... can't explain anything. You can't help being what you are. Well, uh, I... Me, you're cruel, you're heartless. You've left her to starve, or to be run over, or carved up into handbags. Crocodile handbags. For her for hours. So have I. Where'd you get these? <laughs> They're my grandfather's. <laughs> you look just as funny in yours. Yes, I know. I borrowed them from the reptile house. There she is. Daisy. Daisy. Oh. You look all in. I'll take you home. Peter, I'm sorry I shouted at you. And that's all right, I deserved it. No, I shouldn't have interfered. Do you think I'll ever find Daisy? Will you be very sorry if you don't? Yes, I will. She, she's ugly, she's awkward. There's not an endearing thing about her to look at. Yet I'm going to miss her dreadfully. Are you sure you're not saying that just because you've got a guilty conscience? No, of course not. I'm pleased about that. Let's get back to the car. No, don't get out. Good night, Peter. Good night. Don't you worry, Daisy. It's all right. Oh, it's look right. out, Governor. It's a crocodile. It's dangerous. It's not a crocodile, and it's as bad as dangerous as a kitten. I'll get cracking the lot of you. And don't let me catch any of you trying to bully a poor little alligator again. Uh, poor little alligator. Alligator. Yeah. What are you talking about? Is that you, Maura? Yes. Maura, she's back. Really? Yes, yeah, she came nearly all the way home by herself, didn't you? Oh, I'm so glad. I told you alligators were as intelligent as dogs. And you know something? I really think she was pleased to see me. She wagged her tail. Uh, Peter, if you want me to, I will look after Daisy over the weekend. I'll collect her on my way back from work, about three o'clock. Ah, thank you. You won't be late, though, will you? Because my fiancé... <clears throat> I'm being collected just after three. Good night, boy. Good night, Peter. Just a minute. Say good night to Moira. <laughs> Did you hear her? I didn't expect to see you until tomorrow. Going somewhere? I was just on my way to the fishmongers. 
You started writing sea shanties or something? Come on, jump in. By the way, I called for you at Harker's, but they said you'd left. Well, they should know. They fired me. Oh, good. Well, that makes things much easier. Because tomorrow, I've made an appointment for you with Irving J. Rosenblum. Who's he? Oh, darling, he's a song publisher. He's quite crazy, but he wants to hear your songs. Oh, I wonder who told him about me. Daddy did. And you're to see him at 11 o'clock. Then I'll come and pick you all up as arranged, and you can tell me what happened then. Are you at the bottom of this, darling? Darling, you're wonderful. Thanks very much. What's his name? Rosenblum. Irving J. Rosenblum. So James tells me you've written some sensational songs, some great songs. I'd like to hear them. Is uh, that your music bag? Uh, no, I've got an alligator in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How does it breathe? No air holes, no nothing? It's got air holes in the end. Ah, uh, let's see it. Will you open it up, kid, will you please? Certainly. Come on, Daisy. Out you come. Mind your tail on the catch now. Come on. Mind you, Daisy. Come on. Up. Mm. Great-looking crocodile. It's an alligator. Yeah, the same family. Make a sensational pet. Mm. And a good pair of shoes. Yeah, put him on the piano, will you please? He inspires me. Mm. Never been sung about in Timpan Alley. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Quiet, everybody, please. Nobody speak. How's this? As I looked in your eyes, I saw with surprise you were crying with crocodile tears. Oh, that's sensational. It's great. <laughs> Moving, ain't it? I certainly got to handle it, repeat. You've written a great song, great, and I'm going to buy it. I'll play it again, will you please? And sing it, sing it. I looked in your eyes and I saw with surprise you were crying with crocodile tears. Oh, it's a great woman's song. A great woman's song. And we got to give it a story. Oh, it fascinates me. Oh, let me see, let me see. Mm -hmm. I got it, I got it. This is a song about a guy who's in love with a dame. That's great, Mr. Rosenblum. Great. You ain't heard nothing yet. Now, this guy thinks that the dame is in love with him, too, see? <laughs> but she ain't. A oh, great twist. <laughs> now, he's got to march off to the war. Can't you hear the tramps with their marching feet? Hmm? He comes to say goodbye to the snow good dame. She cries, he cries, and then he realizes that she doesn't love him. That she's crying Cry. with crocodile tears. Oh, stop it, Mr. Rosenblum, you're breaking my heart. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pete, for writing one of the great songs of this or any other age. What other songs have you got? Play one for memory. Sit down, sit down, will you please? Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. It stinks. It's terrible. It ain't good either. You don't like it? I ain't exactly crazy about it, but Crocodile Tears, that's a smash. I can hear all the big boys singing now. Sinatra, the moon, Nat King Cole, Crosby, Hope. Oh, not Hope. No Hope. Yeah, play it again, will you please, kid? I don't know it. What kind of a man is that? He writes a great song and says he don't know it? We don't care for false modesty here in Denmark Street. Hello. Get me Sir James Colbrook, Bart. Oh, I can't see with these glasses on. All right, Al. Never mind. You play it again, will you, please? But this time, play it with a little feeling. Put a little schmaltz in it. You know, pluck at my heartstrings. Oh, hello, Sir James. My lord. How strict, Your Grace. How what? Who is it? Who's speaking? <laughs> You're fooling. This is Irving. Irving J. Rosenblum. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're making a harp of my heart. What you say? Who's talking to you? I'm talking to him. Oh, pardon me. Stop it. Wait, wait, where's my glasses? I'm talking to a Bart. Hello, Bart. Hello, Sir James. Hello. Say, you know that kid you sent me? Oh, that's a genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, say, that new song he wrote is going to make a fortune. Well, if it's as good as you say, I'd like to hear it. Well, would you like me to send the pianist up to play it for you? No, certainly not. Send the full orchestra. And the singer. My place next Saturday night. He wants a full orchestra with a singer at his place tomorrow night. Boy, he must have plenty of dough. Three newspapers, hundreds of cinemas, and thousands of mobile fried fish shops. That's right. You buy one of his newspapers in the morning, you go to one of his cinemas in the afternoon, you buy his fish and chips at night, wrapped up in another one of his newspapers, his money makes the whole circle. <laughs> no waste. Yeah, how do you come to know him? I'm going to marry his daughter. Say, you know something? I, would you mind playing that song for me again? The song you played before. 
sensational. Great. Yeah. I knew it. With no words and no music, there's a hit if I ever heard one. Uh, give me a note, will you please, there? I got it, I got it. You fall right down and you crawl like a crocodile. That's the crocodile crawl. All around the hall like a crocodile. That's the crocodile crawl. It's done by uh, plumbers and electricians, and sedate physicians, and politicians, and even people with high positions. It's all the fad to crawl like a crocodile at your favorite palais. They look sad, they bore like a crocodile, even in the ballet. And even if you don't know your left foot from your right foot, never mind. You don't use your feet at all, that's the crocodile crawl. That's, that's the, the crocodile, that's the crocodile, that's the crocodile crawl. Oh, oh, great sensation. Mm. Oh, you fascinator, you, 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 you. What a hit. Three hundred pounds royalties in advance, Daisy. And all because of you. Yeah. So as a special treat, you're gonna spend the weekend with Moira. You like Moira, don't you? That'll be her now. It's right, Mother, it's for me. I'll go. Come on, Daisy. We've got to get cracking. Vanessa. I'm not too early, am I? I told you last night, Colebrook Manor. Oh, what, Colebrook is? Well, yeah. How far is it? I mean, well, I haven't done that for a while. Yeah. Have you ever you been there before? Thank you, sir. Hey! What's the matter? Be oh. careful of that bag. Here we are. Oh, uh, oh thank you. How yeah. nice to see you. We're so Hello. looking forward to the weekend. Oh. Hello, my dear. I don't think you've met my father, have you, uh, General no. Weston? How do you oh, do? how do you do? Peter, uh, you lucky fellow, getting a pretty girl like that. Oh, uh, oh Peter, pop back and get my shooting stick, will you, a good chap? It's in the hall. Is this the car here? Yeah? Yes, get him out of here. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh. Uh, hello. Have you two girls met? Vanessa Colebrook, Moira O'Shannon. How do you do? Hello. I've come to collect Daisy. Uh, uh, Who's Daisy, darling? One of your odd girlfriends? <laughs> Very odd. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, it's a record I borrowed from Moira. You like music that much, Miss O'Shannon? Oh, I hardly think of anything else. Good. I think every girl should have some interest in life. Come on, darling, we must hurry. Goodbye, Miss O'Shannon. So nice to have met you. T -t Too late. She's been packed. Oh, right. See you when I get back to town. Hey! Mind you pass Daisy as soon as you arrive, otherwise she'll dry up. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Who is that girl? Oh, she's a friend of a friend of mine. I've only met her a couple of times. Mad about jazz and all that. She works in Pet's Corner of the zoo. She's engaged to a chap in South America. He's a missionary with the headhunters. Give me a cigarette, will you, darling? Yes, but Sir James. Uh, yes, Sir James. I say, ought to have a nice large piano for Peter. Yes, hope it's in tune. Ah, just the same. Daddy always did like everything larger than life. Hot, I must have a bath. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Peter. Marshall, this is Peter's mother and father. How do you do? How do, you do? Pink Sweet West Wing. This is my father-in-law, General Weston. How do you do, General? How do you do? Military Sweet South Wing. Will you follow me? Yes, Hoskins, what is it? Troops of tomorrow's leader, Sir James. We're attacking the government. Good. Have a go at the Chancellor. The price of petrol must come down or the price of fish must go up. I've got 6,000 mobile fish and chip shops using 84,000 gallons of petrol a week. The cost is £25,916.06 and 
on which 9,614 pounds, nine and sixpence is taxed. Disgraceful. Germany, Sir James, Hockenheimer from Munich. Jawohl. Ja, stimmt. Ja, eben. Nein, machen Sie sich doch keine Sorge. Ja, sag ich mal ganz von Berlichingen. Jawohl. Grüß Gott. Well, we must have a nice chat sometime or other. Good heavens, it's four o'clock. Get me Chicago. Yes, Sir James. Come on, darling. Extraordinary. Amazing. I knew a fellow like that in India. Of course, he wasn't in the oh, army. This way, please, sir. Will you follow me, sir? What? Oh, yes, thank you. This way, sir. I wonder where the roulette tables are. In here, sir. Will you ring, madam, when you want the maid to unpack? Thank you. Oh, a bit of a journey, isn't it? I hope you're not far to go. Oh, Geoffrey, look, a fall poster. I've never slept in one before, have you? Uh, uh, no, no, darling. You know, Dad is really getting more and more eccentric every day. Of course, he always did love playing the big business tycoon. Still, he's really rather sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Now, this is your room, darling. I thought we'd have a little supper together up here just before the party. The oh, yes, the party. This is the bathroom. Gosh. And my room's just over there. Now, I'm going to have a little rest, so why don't you take a bath? Ring if there's anything you want. I'll see you later. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, I'll unpack that if you don't mind. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, Daisy, this is your chance for a swim. That'll be a quick one, though. Thank you. Come on, Daisy. Big enough for mixed bathing. Right. In you go, Daisy. If I can find the tap, I'll get you some water. There aren't any snipers. Sweet, sir. Good. Ha. I say, have you got a map of this place? A map, sir? Well, I've got to find my way back. Uh, and uh, a compass. Bathroom's free, darling. Daisy! Oh, Daisy! What have you done? Oh, Daisy. This is very, very naughty. Oh, how am I ever going to get it cleared up? That's all right, anyway. shouldn't have done it, Daisy. 
Anyone would think I didn't feed you. And it's no good looking at me like that. I'm not going to forgive you. J -j Just look at that. Look. And this chicken. You've hardly even touched it. It's sheer wanton destruction. Peter, you really must stop smoking. That's a terrible cough. <laughs> I must cut it out. <coughs> All right, my girl, you go straight back in your bottom drawer. Come on. You know, this really is a jolly good year. Geoffrey, hmm? how much money have you got in the bank? Well, about 15 pounds until the end of the month. Why? Well, it's all these servants. We shall have to tip them. Yeah, I'd rather tip the bottle. Oh, Geoffrey, do be serious. Any minute now, Sir James will be wanting to know about our finances. Don't worry about Sir James. I know his type. I can manage him. <laughs> you know, darling, you look very sweet tonight. Dear Geoffrey. Darling, you look gorgeous. Out of this world. You make me feel as if I want to sit down at a piano and compose a ballet. You say such beautiful things about me. Not very original, I'm afraid. Thanks for saying them, anyway. Gracious, what's happened? I asked them to send up a really nice supper. Well, th that'll suit me fine. I, I, I like pineapple. <laughs> Don't be so silly. There's no need for you to become a starving musician just yet, you know. Now, stop being polite and let's have some champagne. Oh, John, do you know if this is all we're going to have? I don't understand, madam. I'll inquire about it right away. Thank you. To us. To us. <laughs> Newfoundland, sir, on the telephone in your study. I thought I told you I was not at home to Newfoundland. Yes, Jen. Very sorry, I think. I can't imagine what happened to Father. Tally ho! Tally ho! Tally ho! Anybody about? I suppose we'd better go and discuss this marriage settlement. Well, as a matter of fact, I hadn't really thought... Uh... <laughs> well, let's go somewhere quiet. Follow me. Excuse me. I study. It's not far, but the only exercise I get. What's that? Someone in trouble. Help! It's grandfather. Help! 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 Come into my study with the others. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. You're wet, boys. Good grief, more maggots. All right, Father, it's stopped. Shoot them on sight, I say. Hello. What are you doing there? You poor little thing. Oh. Hmm. Did they shut you away while Master went to the party, Wattie, then, did they? Never mind. I'll take you for a nice walk. He's in the garden. If you promise to behave yourself. Now, about these settlements. I'm old-fashioned enough to believe in marriage settlements, so I'll be quite frank with you, Weston. How much have you got in the bank? Oh, apart from a few securities, uh, about 15. Uh, uh, until the end of the month, of course. Only 15,000? Hmm. Well, I knew you were hard up, but I didn't know it was quite as bad as all that. However, I suppose the only thing that matters is that my daughter's in love with your son. Suppose I settle a quarter of a million on her. Will that do? Uh, I 
think that'll be splendid, splendid. Uh, don't you, darling? No, that's fine. She's been more trouble to get rid of than an acre of thistles. Now, you can have a nice walkie. I'll be back in ten minutes, and if you're a good girl, I'll go take you for a swim in the lake. What are you thinking about? The one thing a woman hates to think about. Another woman. Well, there are millions of women in the world. Any particular one? Yes. Let's take the Irish ones first, shall we? That friend of yours with the ginger hair. Auburn. Are you interested in her? Interested? In her? Yeah, I'm mad about her. As a matter of fact, when you turned up this afternoon, I was just about to pop off to Paris with her for the weekend. Oh, Peter, please be serious. Well, quite honestly, darling, I... What's the matter? I've just seen an alligator. Peter, have you gone mad? No, I... Oh, well, if you didn't want to discuss Moira, I should have thought you could have found a more subtle maneuver than that. An alligator. Why, I just saw a giraffe playing the guitar, but I didn't let it interfere with my conversation. Don't be silly, Vanessa. Anyway, Moira's engaged. And I suppose if she wasn't, you'd prefer her to me. I see. They'll be married at St. Margaret's, and the reception will be held in my London house. I like a military wedding myself, with a guard of honor and all that, what? Don't be ridiculous. He's a songwriter, not a sergeant major. Pretty. Now, let's see when I've got a free afternoon. Ah, oh, yes. Next Thursday at half past two. But what about the bands? Dear lady, leave all that to me. Oh, shouldn't we consult the youngsters? Certainly not. They want to get married. Better be as soon as possible. Matter's settled. We'll never compare to your first love. For where will you meet such a simple and sweet unrehearsed? Why, isn't there old Smithers over there? Why, of course it is. And someday you'll be looking through the pages of the past. And you will know. Of course I remember, General. I was with Fruity Carruthers on your left flank. Huh? We crept up on them all right, eh? <laughs> not much they can teach us about pincer movements. No, certainly <laughs> not. <laughs> Wilfred, I think you'd better take me home. <laughs> Funny, same thing happened in Dilly. At first you wondered what the glow man and then you both grew up in just one magic moment. Others who dare to will never compare to your first love. For where will you meet such a simple and sweet unrehearsed love? Someday you'll be looking through the pages of the past. Then you will know that your first love was your love. <laughs> Yes, what on earth is the matter? I don't know. We'll find out that. Yes, sir. A wretched bugger, that's what. A nice thing to bring to a party. Daisy. <laughs> what on earth? Peter's mugger. Go. Down there. Daisy, who let you out? Oh, you know, you've mucked everything up. What the 
please, if you want to bring that thing here. That's all right. There's no need to get excited. She's really quite harmless. Isn't harmless? It? With half the guests in hysterics and the other half in a dead faint? I'd like a word with you, young man. In there. You'd better come too. Peter! Hello. Well, for goodness sake, put it down. It'll bite you. No, it's all right when you get to know her. Well, you don't really mean to say it belongs to you. Yes. What is this, some sort of practical joke? <laughs> of course not. No, she's really rather sweet. I say hello to Vanessa. But you'll get to like her. Get to like her? Couldn't you? Well, how could anyone possibly get to like an alligator? Oh, Peter, why did you bring it here? Well, I, I, I was going to leave it at home, Oh, but I... don't bother to explain. You just did it to break up our engagement party. Oh, no. Well, if you didn't want to marry me, why didn't you just say so instead of making a fool out of me in front of all my friends? No. Peter, come in at once. Well, what do you want to say for yourself? I'm sorry. I thought I told you to get rid of that mugger. I knew a fellow in India who was eaten by one of those things. I'm sorry it is has caused so much trouble. I shouldn't have brought her. I'll take her home in the morning. You do nothing of the kind. I'll not have her in my house. Nor in mine. Have her put to sleep. Best thing for all concerned. Have her put to sleep? Are oh, you cruel, heartless? Don't call me names. Nobody's allowed to call me names. Apologize at once. Not unless he apologizes to Daisy. Ha! Oh, apologize to a mugger. He's stark, raving mad. And not even my daughter's going to marry a lunatic. Peter, do apologize. I will not apologize. Daisy hasn't done anyone any harm. I'm going and I'm going to take Daisy with me. And I shall marry whom I please. Haskins, cancel my appointment for next Thursday afternoon at St. Margaret's. Thank you. I think that marriage will take place in the zoo. Ah, what a beautiful pet, sir. I hope you don't mind, but I heard her banging her tail and I took the liberty of carrying her into the garden. Oh, so it was you. I suppose you're fond of alligators. Mr. Weston, sir, once an alligator lover, always an alligator lover. You see, sir, I was born and bred in Brazil. That's how I got to know them so well. I thought you might have liked them to swim in the lake. Instead, perhaps, you might care to pack my bags. And this. I've got to talk to you. Moira, I've been kicked out of my home when I'm on the streets. Moira, I'm not engaged anymore. Whether you're engaged or not, it's of no interest to me whatsoever. Can I give you a lift to the zoo? No, thanks. What about dinner tonight? Are you mad? Well, I thought you might like to see Daisy again. No, I wouldn't. And will you please leave me alone? 
pay. That will cost you money. What's the matter with you? Why are you crying? I'm not crying. Crocodile tears, eh? Vanessa, I do want you to be happy. But this isn't the first time you've imagined yourself in love with somebody. And it certainly won't be the last. Besides, why bother about somebody who treats you like this? It's not Peter's fault, Daddy. It's Daisy's. And the more horrid people are to her, the more difficult he gets. Why? Because he wants her to be popular. Well, if Daisy has to be popular to make you happy, by thunder, I'll make you the most popular alligator this side of the Amazon. Sit down, sit down. Don't bother to stand up. Hoskins, get to the edge of the Daily Echo, will you? Now, you know why I've asked you here today. The marriage will now take place. Vanessa wants it that way, we must keep her happy. Your boy has apologised, and I'm going to allow him to keep that thing of his. What, oh, the mugger? Yes, extraordinary, but they both insist on it, and they are. Obstinacy gets it from you, Father. Oh, well, I won't have it in my house. Don't argue, we haven't got the time. But they're such dreadful pets. Only because we've been brought up to think them so, but I can alter all that. Colebrook here, want you to run an alligator competition. Yes, alligator. Delightful pets. The Echo will run a beauty competition for them at my place next Saturday. First prize, 5,000 pounds. Don't argue, man. Do as you're told. Say that in society circles they're likely to oust the dog. Call them a... Uh, Man's best friend. Man's best friend. See what I mean? In a couple of weeks, the alligator will be the most popular pet in the country. Three like rabbits. We should be walking about knee-deep in them. You know, General, that uh, 76 eggs can be laid in one year by a single alligator? Imagine what a married one could do. <laughs> All right, Albert, and crawl like a crocodile. That's the crocodile crawl. All around the hall like a crocodile. That's the crocodile crawl. It's done by plumbers and electricians. And by physicians. What did you say his name was? Nelson. But which way do we go? Straight to the judges' ring, Albert. It's the fat to crawl like a crocodile. That's your favorite ballet. They look sad and ball like a crocodile, even in the ballet. And even if you don't know your left foot from your right foot, never mind, you don't use your feet at all. That's the Oscar, crocodile. disqualify that alligator. Yes, sir, James. I say, is there much farther to go? No, sir, just down here. Oh. Sir James, would you care to say a few words for the newsreel? I did, I'm sure. Right. Yes. Uh, the success of this latest Daily Echo enterprise has exceeded all expectations. Uh, within a year, I venture to predict uh, the alligator will be as popular in our homes as the cat or the dog. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I've got an alligator! <laughs> I take it you were officially invited, sir. Not only officially invited, but I formally declined. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very happy to welcome you to the first crocodile meeting... Crocodile? Alligator, alligator rally. Uh, alligator rally ever to be held in this country. Though, of course, <laughs> as you know, they have been sending crocodiles to Brighton for years. You must have all heard of the old crocs race. <laughs> oh, dear. They're a right lot here. Mr. Rosenblum? Yes? I'm from the Echo. Oh. Tell me, who do you think will win the rally? May the best one win. That's a very sporting answer. Thank you. I don't know what I'm going to do with the cup. A famous alligator owner, the Bishop of Clandon. The Bishop of Clandon. My friends, what fun it is to be amongst you. The Bishop? 
owns an alligator called Janice. Mr. Edwards, uh, I'm sure the listeners will want to know something about your pet. Uh, yes, I suppose they will. Uh, 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 how old is it? How old? Well, yes. uh, I was born in the 1890s, I should say, in the days of Gladstone and Dick Bentley. I hope that thing of yours is nice and friendly. Well, let a fly. Who's talking about flies? I'm talking about Junior. <laughs> Come, Junior. I don't want anything to happen to him. Come on, I think. <laughs> now, Mr. Harding. Perhaps you'd like to tell us when you first became interested in alligators. I've never had the slightest interest in alligators. And this whole ridiculous stunt is designed to boost the circulation of a horrid newspaper that I don't read and which shouldn't even be published. The more I am astounded that so fear... Uh, go on, get out of there. Go on, get this away. Go on. Husky! Together, I suppose we'd better introduce ourselves. Albert, this is Mr. Weston. Miss Colebrook, Albert. How do you do? How do you do? And now maybe you'll remove Daisy. That seems a pity. Let me help. Tricky things, alligators. You've got to um, more or less charm them, you know. Well, don't do anything out of character on my account. Where do you want her? Over here on the trolley. Of course, lacking any charm myself, I might ask why you came here. I merely hope to win £5,000 for the zoo. Anything wrong with that? No, nothing at all, except you don't stand a chance. Anyway, I thought you might like to meet Albert. I'm not in the least interested in Albert. Having met him, my sympathies are entirely with the headhunters. And up to now, I've always been in favour of missionaries. So apparently is Vanessa. I suppose an alligator means nothing to you after all your experiences. Oh, you've heard about them, have you? Yes, Peter told me. Well, I tried awfully hard, but I just couldn't stop them breeding. You expected them to? Oh, yes, yes. That was the whole point of my going there. Well, anyway, I think you're very brave, Mr. Oh, Shannon. Oh, Shannon? Yes. Oh, isn't that Moira's name? Yes. You mean it's legally her name? <laughs> well, I sincerely hope so. I see. Excuse me, please. Yes. Here comes your girlfriend. <laughs> Peter. Hello. I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Yeah. You don't really want to marry me, do you? I, I thought it was something to do with my not liking Daisy very much, but I see now that I was wrong. It's Moira, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm afraid I've behaved very badly. That's all right. In a way, I... I feel rather sorry for you. Sorry? For me? Why? Well, because she isn't engaged to Albert. She's already married to him. Married? Well, let's get on with the judging. I've got a plane to catch to Istanbul at quarter past four. Seems everything's fair and above board and the daisy wins. Of course it is. James is just coming down to start the judging. Everything all right? I'm rushed to win. Don't like that docking. Hope they don't get out of hand like they did in 26. What happened in 26? Control your brute, the treasure run amok. I resent that. The call of the wild cannot be ignored. What happened in 26? If you don't know, I'm certainly not going to enlighten you. Too sorry for words. Ivan, behave yourself, Ivan. 
The beast flatulent and obscene. Oh, it's 26 all over again. What the hell is she talking about? I don't know, Sir James. Hoskins, stop that adding any quicker. It's surely necessary. Oh, Can't you control that ugly specimen? Don't you shout at me. I'm not shouting at you. <laughs> Do something! Throw yourself in their path! Well, isn't that supposed to happen? It's hard to say. It could be one of Daddy's stunts. Perhaps I should go and help. I'd rather you stayed with me. I'm a little bit frightened of alligators. Daisy! Come on! Everybody, come on! Everybody! Well, do something, man. How on earth are we going to judge oh, these animals we can't even see them? Oh, a likely work of ruin. We used to get muggers out of the Ganges with Mills Moss. Yes, he wants them out alive. Oh, oh history's repeating itself. No! Well, Daisy! No! Daisy! Oh, never mind your Nelson. Wait till my Emily comes out. You'll get a good smack bottom. No! Daisy! Come back here! Daisy! Daisy. The only place we can possibly see from here. I think you're right. Hoskins, stop everybody else coming on the bridge. No, we'll judge the exhibits from here, and we should do so in exactly ten seconds. I know I shouldn't care to be in there with that lot. Now, really, I must ask you to get off the bridge, madam. I must ask you to get off the bridge. I can't be bothered with your Emily. I'm... It occurred in my mind that that one over there is the winner. Her name's Daisy. Which one's that? That one. I still can't see which one you mean. That's that one there, and I advise you to see it very quickly if you want to keep it by employment. Oh, oh yes, of course. Oh, I can see quite clearly now. So, yes, Daisy, easily the best. Oh, oh dear, I can't see Nelson anywhere. If I don't find him, I'll lose my job. Then Albert will have to support you. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, quiet, quiet. The judges have come to the unanimous decision that the Daily Echo Alligator of the Year is Daisy. Owned by Mr. Peter <laughs> Missionary. Well, you are one, aren't you? <laughs> what on earth gave you that idea? Well, Moira told Peter that you converted headhunters. Did she now? Well, I was a not very successful rabbit exterminator on an Australian sheep farm. Just wait till I see that sister of mine. Sister? Well, don't tell me she changed that, too. And I thought you were... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's gratitude, huh? Oh, wait till I get you home. Oh, Mr. Wait, Rosenblum. Uh, what do you want? Have you anything to say about the accident? Yes. Who pushed me? Who? I... Are you all right, darling? Yeah, of course I am. It's only a cramp. Oh. I'm sorry Albert wasn't around to rescue you. As you probably noticed, Albert was busy elsewhere. Oh, who cares about Albert? Oh, I must say, coming from you, that's in very bad taste. 
If you must lead a double life, you might at least be loyal. Have you hit your head or something? No, I'm perfectly right. I'm just a little old-fashioned. I don't know what you're rambling on about. If I can't talk about my own brother... Well, who mentioned your brother? You did. You said Albert. Albert's your brother? Have you been pretending... Oh, oh. There goes again. oh, dear. I'm terribly sorry, Peter. But you see, I used Albert as a protection against men. I tell all my boyfriends I'm engaged, and then they won't ask me to marry them. When I meet the man I want to marry, I'll ask him myself. Well, why don't you ask me? Because you're engaged to somebody else. I'm not, you know. What on earth do you think you're doing? How did the sort of behavior I expect from a future son-in-law of mine? Water on the brain. Peter, really? Hot blood runs in the family. Would you be very cross, sir, if I married Albert's sister instead of your daughter? Who the devil's Albert? This is Albert, Daddy. Are you in on this, too? Well, sir, you see, I... I wasn't talking to you. Vanessa, you seem to have a remarkable flair for picking congenital idiots. Excuse me, Sir James. What are you flapping for? Play into Istanbul. You've missed it. Charter another one, man. Yes, Sir James. Vanessa, do you mind if your fiancé marries Albert's sister? Well, Daddy, Peter and I had a talk... Yes or no? No. Well, that seems to be that. Good luck, both of you. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> What are you hanging about for? James, it's a matter of the prize money, under the circumstances. Oh, use your head, man. Uh, say the judges disagreed and give it to charity. Yes, Sir James. What charity would you suggest? Give it to your widow. Yes, Sir James. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to your benighted son, we may show down the tradesman's entrance. Huh. If you ask me, I think the boy's off his rocker. Well, after all, Morris' father was in the army. Oh, really? What regiment? Band's master in the brigade. Oh, a music waller. I wonder if he was a fellow that got eaten by no, the wasn't. wasn't father. Oh. As I was telling you, I never really intended to write this lowbrow stuff. I think I shall devote my gift to serious music. Of course, darling, but what are we going to live on? Ask Daisy. She knows all the answers. You know, we must think about Daisy. Don't you think it would be better if we left her with Nelson? Put her in the zoo? Certainly not. She'd miss us dreadfully. Well, I know she would, but we must think about our honeymoon. We can't take her on that. The idea of parting with her is out of the question. Oh, think of the fun she'd have. Nelson's obviously fallen for her completely. Completely. <laughs> Well, we'll see. Anyway, thank you, Daisy. Thanks for everything. Beat the drum, bang the gong, let the golden wedding bells chime. My heart's a flutter, I'm walking on air, I'm in love for the very first time. Turn me loose, set me free, I've no use for reason or rhyme. I'm hazy crazy, but what do I care, I'm in love for the very first time. I thought that I was freer than the birdie in the sky, then you passed by. And wham, before I knew it, I was really going through it like a fish on a hook with that silly faraway look. I'm mad's a hatter, but what does it matter? Let me live. 